Yo, yeah, this your boy Mean Gene three one third. You know you heard, and this is the comedy corner. Way outside the box, where All it. right, man, we here at the comedy corner. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? This is a three one third production, uh, in association with City Buzz Radio, City Buzz Network. Again, this is the comedy corner. We out the uh, box with it. We out the box. We ain't trying to be the same. We don't want to be like everybody else. We just doing us. All right. But uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this on my uh, first show that uh, I want to give big ups to my big uncle, Brandon B. House, rest in peace. See, my boy, that boy, that was my guy. That's the first dude I seen out here in AZ taking control of his destiny on his own terms. He was like, no, I'm going to be producing shows. I'm going to be making people uh, send in uh, resume interviews so they can be on my show. I'm going to have my own interview platform where I can let my guests be comfortable and tell their story and uh, F up their name. See, oh, fuck up my name every fucking time, <laughs> all purpose. Yeah, we got uh, comedian Gene Gilmore. Who is that? Bro, it's me. <laughs> it's me, Gene Three One Third. That's what I said, Gene Gilmore. So uh, back to the interview. Like, man, bro. Man, one of Chicago's finest. Like, we really lost we lost somebody with that one. Big ups to him because uh, I literally want to be here right now if we wanted to help. But with that being said, we got to introduce our yeah, our host that we got here right now. Let me just drop a couple little gems about him. He's an accomplished actor, writer, uh, part-time director, OG of the OGs, one of the funniest comedians in Arizona, in the nation of the United States. Uh, and you definitely want to keep your auntie, your mama, and your uh, grown little sister away from him because he's a player. Oh. My, <laughs> my big homie, the comedian, Easy living, Seth, Seth, easy living, man. Talk your shit, man. What's, What's going on, y'all? Welcome, City Buzz viewers. It's your boy, Easy Living. Hey, I got the invite, popped in, talked about my boy, Brandon B. Ain't no way I would not do this because of him. That was my homeboy, my friend. Oh, Brandon B. taught me a lot of ropes. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm older than him, he taught me the ropes on producing my own stuff, being follow your dream. So I follow mine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I miss it. I miss our talks. I just kickbacks, just me and him. But you know what? Because you still live right here. Every show I go, I take you with me. Man. Because you taught me a lot of the ropes. Okay. Well, other than that, how y'all doing? <laughs> how the hell y'all doing? Like he said, yeah, I got a lot of female friends out in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, a lot of younger than me. <laughs> Since I'm 65, of course. A lot of them younger than me, but they be getting mad at me because I'll be the reason they mom and their grandma can't watch the kids on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you shouldn't say my grandma or my mama want to meet you. We outside the box waiting. Yeah, so what? Uh, so what? What you expect me? Don't get mad at. Me. Don't get mad. Be happy for your grandma. No hate the player. Dang. That's it. <laughs> oh, man, y'all, man, how y'all doing? I'm doing good, man. I've been. Shit, last year I traveled so much. Been traveling this year, man, doing shows all over with my girl, Sheree Lucky. Where you been trying to hunt, so you been in the Man, I've been I ain't yeah. left the country. I'm scaling the country. I still might got warrants over there with all the concern. <laughs> it might still be after me. So I don't go too far. But no, man, the move since ooh, July, I don't get Chicago, mm. Dallas twice, Atlanta twice, Word. New York, Houston. Chicago, Heaven, Indiana, Jolie, Illinois. I didn't go to the prison. They might have kept me, but <laughs> I'm down in that area. We ran out of states. He drove everywhere. Man, I mean, ever comedy influence, or was this more for your acting side? What was you busy on? A side? little boat. Most, for, for, you know, comedy. Get myself out there for different, bigger venues that been inquiring about me. Okay. So you got to remember, man. A lot of your, a lot of comedians don't understand. A lot of your. Comedy come from word of mouth from other people. You do a show and they like you, you make you laugh, and you got something they remember you by, and go around, oh, you he's living $40, $40, right? <laughs> that's what you gotta hang on, you gotta have that one little niche. And that's how I've been getting shows on my own. I'm my own agent right now. Cause why, why pay somebody for something I could do myself? Yeah, I can watch this stuff. Always, you, you gotta stuff. grind, you gotta be true to your game. A lot of comedians I see, I'll be on a certain show with them. They want to promote it. <laughs> they want to live off of your promotion. They'll share it. <laughs> well, I don't matter, but promote your own. Commercial. Commercial. Like I said, man, I got so much stuff in the 
in the works now. I even I even got my own company, Easy Living Entertainment. Oh, right, right now, Easy Living Easy E-N-T. Living Entertainment. You know, I'm hooked up with the BRC Theater Group. We do a lot of things. I do plays and stuff. I need to holler at you about that. Real, I'm trying to get my acting up. I, I had a couple opportunities a couple years ago, but yeah, I'm trying to get on the stage. Yeah, we got, you know, we always put, when we got casting calls for plays or whatever, you know, I did a couple, I did a movie for uh, Dr. Rodney Pearson. It's on Amazon now and Tubi called Shady Passion. Yeah, the role for me that I played was kind of hard. You know, I played a retired army hero who sexually molested his little sister while he was doing that. Oh. Now, how do you get your mind man. right for that type of role? How do you get into that that, that mind state to be that, that yeah, character? It, it wasn't easy, but thought about it. I even asked some of my family, what you think about me playing this? And I thought about, hell, what they think, can you do it? So I had to go from being a comedian to being serious. And it worked. Because I said, my man, that's what I want to do. You know, with actors, especially when you have a, a tough character like that, you can lose yourself in the character. We yeah. lost the uh, great actors like Heath Ledger playing the Joker. He literally went crazy because he held into it. He couldn't get back out. How do you separate the two? How do you separate easy step, uh, easy living step from the character you play? I guess my grad is a little different. I'm like, okay, this is what I want to do. I always want to act, be in plays and movies. I had to realize you have to realize that this is really what you want to do. I'm not going to get lost in it. It's a role. I had to realize it was a role. Then I went back and looked at, thought about a lot of different TV shows, movie person played their role. So, hey, I could do it, but I, I ain't kissing nobody. I ain't kissing nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Hell. Gotta draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I gotta draw the line there. I don't want no lip juice but a woman's on my lips. No, but I did it, and after a while, I got comfortable with it. I wasn't comfortable with it at first, but I got comfortable with it. All right. And a lot of stuff I got to hand live, like a lot of coming in and movies and plays. I know what the script is. Script is good, but they let me make it so I can develop that care. So I had to develop that care. Okay. See, that's the difference. You had to develop it. You know, while I was doing it, where I lived that character. Yeah, it was hard, and that was like during the pandemic. Oh, you had time to like really be isolated and really get into it. Right, that, that that's even better. Yeah, it helps. You know, you gotta set your mind. I don't know why. Once I set my mind to doing something, I would do it. Hmm. Cause that's how I challenge myself. All day. So I always challenge myself. Cause I look back on where I came from, where where I did, what I did, what I should have did. And that used to hinder me from moving ahead because I wasn't comfortable with myself. With that right there, with that right there, you know, I come from the Midwest too, you know, the 313, that's represented the Detroit area. You know what I'm saying? So you're from that way, you're from Illinois. Uh, break down your city and your background and like what you had to repeat to get to the man that you are today. Wow, man, you know, I, I went through a lot. Growing up in the 60s and the 70s in Chicago, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard as it is now. Right. Neighborhoods took care of neighborhoods. Yeah, I grew up around the gangs and all that, but I didn't have to be a part of it because I didn't want to. I got beat up a few times. I mean, I don't care. Because I might get beat up, but the odds was in my favor because I'm going to win sooner or later. <laughs> you know, so. I think right, fighting style, not making come back. You know, <laughs> oh, Always thought, thought I had to prove something to my dad. Mm. I used to think I wasn't good enough for him. Cause my brother's smart as hell, my sister's smart, all that. But I was the black sheep, I did. I got everybody in trouble growing up. I was that little boy. And I got the whole family, my sister, I always get in trouble. So Why you do that? Time. It's always you. It's always me. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but what I did in high school, I had joined the military while I was in the high school. What service did you get? Went to the Navy. Navy? Navy. Right. Navy, CBs. Um, did my time there. Did some things that I'm not proud of there. Was in some conflicts that you ain't gonna never hear about. It ain't in my record. It ain't any of me. Yeah, no. I got hurt. I'm 100% disabled vet. And I would leave it like that. What's going on, guys, to the streets or the military? Military. 
because you got to always think. You always got to be aware. You know, I watch everything. You know, different sounds, different smells, a trigger that's something that ain't supposed to be there. Mm. Like Street Chicago, my hood, I knew. I knew where to go, knew where not to go. Mm. I know when to wear my hat to the left, to the right, or where it's straight. Never you know. All it's going to the you know. But you know what? The hardest part was I got hurt when I got out. I used to hide my emotions. I used to laugh, keep crying. That's what being a man is about. That's how they raised us <laughs> back yeah. home. Like, you, you don't show emotion. I did just saw that. I didn't let. I didn't want people getting close to me because I lost a lot of friends that was close to me, and I started having nightmares and flashbacks and all that. Back there, they called it shell shock, mm. but it thought I was PTSD, and I had it. And I didn't find out about it until later. And during that time, I fell into drugs. Anything to get that feeling off. Right. And my drug choice was crack cocaine. And I smoked it. I, 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 I smoked it. <laughs> I, I, you can ask you to that for that for woo. I would do whatever I could to get high. Because I didn't want to sleep. And after not that, I didn't use that excuse no more. Cause I just wanted to get high. It wasn't the sleep, it was the waking up. Yep. And waking up is the worst when you when you dealing with trauma, dealing with anything that's painful mentally. The sleep is hard to get and it's over too quick. And then you wake up like I'm back in the jail. It's like being in jail. Like I know I did not wake up. I know I put my family through a lot of myself to a lot. I even had a kid during my ditch. First son. My were my addiction, but I was always in his life. But I wasn't there like I was supposed to be. I was in treatment, I went to treatment 17 times. Oh, you just having fun with it, that was a vacation. And I was going there, when it come to payday, I get out the day before. <laughs> Crack bag, give me anything I want. Crank the system. <laughs> did that for a long time. And I can remember my last time I got high. And that was keeping me off drugs today. Okay. I was in Chicago. I was on the street south there called Justine. And shout out to the street, Justine. Yeah. And you know, I'm the originator. Everybody, when you hear people say $40, $40 holler, I originated that. I started getting the holes $40. Everybody, why you mean so much? He gave me 40 something. That's what I thought. I originated that. <laughs> no, but my, my last time I was on Justine, mm -hmm. I was in my car. I kept a car here. Mm. I was in my car. It's too cold to be out in the street. I, I, me <laughs> no. I had four rocks. Mm. I gave her one. You know, get a $40 holiday. Give me some head. I had, gave her a rock. So I'm sitting in the car. We about, about, you know, about to get high. So baby, I gave her yours. You know what you got to do. So pop that rock on that pipe. Mm -hmm. And I was hitting him the hole. Next thing you know, not feeling when I looked up, it was the police. Let that one down, let that one down, like. <laughs> so I cracked it just a little bit. So I'm free to go to jail. I'll let you, oh, let that one out. I hear that. Y'all gonna take me. Y'all gonna take me. I'm gonna let that one down. I said, man. Go to jail then. So go, give me that rock back. I took a rock through the whole thing on there. Man, I took a godfather. Bruce Wall, how is there? He better me. Stop it, bro. I, no, I'm serious. <laughs> That's some serious shit. Then I heard that radio. Shots fired. Shots fired. Every couple blocks away. You say, when I come back, when I come back, this car, you, you better not be here. Man, I drove my car over the next block over on Bishop, parked in the alley. The girl say, can I get that rock back? <laughs> I put her ass out the car. I smoked the last rock and went to the VA hospital. This was in April 2013. That's the vine. I smoked no cracks in. The vine invention. I asked God, why me? Why do I keep? When they got to the point I was smoke, I smoked down the eight, down the eight ball before I went in. It was some good stuff. Good shit. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But I didn't, I didn't get high. So I'm just telling me, go check in. I checked in, did the treatment. I missed this thing. And I wasn't doing it for sisters, my brothers, nobody. I was doing it because I didn't want to do it. And I got a son to raise. 
how can I raise my son? I can't even take care of myself. You heard God, you heard the universe talking to you like, hey, man, I'm gonna tell you. I'm not about to throw you into the real. Walls. I'm about to put you in this ground or in this hole. Like, it's. Or the real, I'm gonna tell y'all something, believe me or not. I was in Jesse Brown Bay Hospital. I was on it. I was on uh, in the new build. I think it was Five South. Where? And this Chicago. Chicago. West Side of Chicago. West Side. West Side. I was at DA. DA Jesse Brown B. A. And I was in my room one night. I was like, Lord, why do I? Cool. I start praying, God, why me? I don't want to be like this guy. I asked, please. But I swear, felt something touch my shoulder. I heard a voice say, "You could go there." But I didn't know what it meant. Some bro finna die or what? Elaborate, Lord. I'm gonna come back. Like I was sitting there and get the message. <laughs> and, and then I heard another voice say, "It's off your back." I thought about it. I read some more. Say, God took this yoke off my back because it's red. Took me right to that scripture. The yoke was lifted. Yeah. So I got out the hospital. And I'm like, there. What I was gonna do? I got like fifty six hundred dollars in my pocket. Ain't no way I was going back toward the hood because I don't want to get stuck. I just got on this bus, took it down to Greyhound, and I ain't know how I was going. I didn't have no idea. Definition of Jesus take the wheel. <laughs> you know, I got to the bus station, I just hit Phoenix. Took a bus all the way to Phoenix. Three days I was on the bus. Got there, got a niece out here. You know, I didn't want to bother them with all that. But we hooked up, and I be there and and I'm not going to question no more. Why me? And what year was this again? 2013. 2013. Planted in the AZ desert. And I'm like, I didn't have no plans on doing no cover. I just wanted to get some, you know, established with me and my son. I could bring my son because I didn't want him growing up on the streets of Chicago like that. I didn't want to lead in there. Because back then it was dangerous. He's a target. My son was six foot. Four, two thirty. He a target for the gangs. Everyone, you either with us or against us. We gonna try to recruit you. We need you. So I got out of here. I met some pretty nice people. You know, my friends from Pittsburgh. My crew. I hang with that. And then one day we was at, I was at Michaels. When Michaels used to be Michaels Park, whatever they on Park Central. All right. I went to a comedy show. I said, man, 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 I could do better than that. This is still 2013 went to the comedy show? <laughs> no, this is 2015. This is 2015, now. Okay. And I was like, I could do better than that. Well, next month we have my $500 take off. There were some comedians that are still around now, like Sincere, Chris Moe, all of us in there. Yeah. I walked away with all of them. Shout out, big bro, comedian, comedian Sincere, with Chris Moe, y'all. Right, still my dude. Special. Shout out to him. And I wore it. Thank you. Sergio. Appreciate him. He got me started. I won the contest to go perform in what's that? El Paso, Texas. Hey. I ain't looked back since because I like it. And since then, I've been producing my own in different cities. I did one in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, Chicago, Atlanta a couple of times. I produced my own and flew the comedians there. And did some of the flute comedians here. So when you started feeling that, that comedy bug and you started seeing like, I don't just like this. I love this. Like, explain that to people that don't understand. Because as me and I know, but like once you know, this is it. Like, how did that feeling hit you? Well, I knew that's what I wanted to do because I I used to be told, "Oh, you funny, man. You make people laugh." Oh, so okay. Well, yeah. It's, and it's, I started it. doing it, and I learned, I was never nervous. I just didn't want to bomb. Mm. I ain't never bomb. <laughs> um, but I started doing it and I just started living it. Yeah. And what's something I want to do, I went for it. I put invested myself in it. Mm. See, a lot of comedians do you that they don't do it. When you're gonna mm -hmm. do, you gotta make sacrifices to do if that's what you're gonna do. Anything you want to like, you're gonna have to sacrifice a little bit. I did a lot of stuff for free. I did a lot of stuff for free. Long nights driving, stuff, people would pay 30 bucks, but I wanted to establish myself. Yeah. And once I started getting established, people started serving for me, and I got started serving for people. Got a night little comedy circle. It's okay. 
Shout out Bobby Johnson. Yeah, Bobby Johnson. Easy. Bobby Johnson, one of the biggest employers of black and Latino comedians out here. Male, female, if you funny, he wants you. You see, I, I learned from Bobby Johnson. I looked at this as a business from the business aspect. Not just doing, I looked at it from the business aspect. Yeah. Or how I'm going to get paid doing what I do. Right. And I learned. A lot of these, they just want to perform. Bobby, what Bob Man tell you, you're going to get 75% of your ticket sales. That's your pay. One show, I sold 70 tickets. There was $20 a piece. I got 75% of it. $20. Yeah. So that's 15 bucks per ticket. Yeah, 15 bucks per ticket. I sold six. Do the math. I feel like fifteen math. times sixty. Y'all got y'all got your phones. That was quite easy money. But I don't want to stand in a lot of comedians. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just letting you know. You got to realize this is a business that you need. Yeah. If you want to show, if I book you in a show and the show with me, I see you don't promote yourself, promote the show, or nothing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hire you. I'm not gonna recommend you to be on that show. I invested in you. I got poor return on my investment. Yeah. I'm pulling out, selling my stock. I didn't love this. Why you gonna put me on your show? I make I get five minutes in your show. No, I don't do that. I just hold him a call. I'm not being mean. Desmond, I got this much invested. I got to get back. I had to pay the comedian. Comedian fly in hotels. I gotta look at the big picture. Yeah, There's a lot of local comedians that would tell you that I used a higher couple of times, a few times. Flew some of them out of town to do a show with me. That's just the way I am. I get everybody to be a bit of doubt. I might not never say something if I don't, if you cross me, I ain't going to come in your face and see you. A lot of them talk about me. I don't care. <laughs> I bet we'll start worrying about that. Well, we from talk is cheap. As long as you don't do nothing, come too close. <laughs> don't come in my But side. I try to be fair. And a lot of them like, man, well, who you is? How do you get all these shows? People reach out to me. I reach out better. I'm going to be in your area. And you got that show I like to be on. And sometimes I have to fly myself there. My brother, Seth Easy Living literally uh, invited himself to this interview. He was like, I'll be there. I'll be your first motherfucker if you want me there, brother. That's what I'll do, man. I ain't, man. Look, look, this. He's like, if you serious, I'm serious too. And, and that's what it's about. A lot of people don't take it serious. They ain't going to do a show. I ain't get this much and that. That's you. Now I got to ask him, Pisces. You know this is what I charge. I, some things for people like my boy Lamar, Lamar Mitchell, anytime he needs me. Yeah, anytime Lamar Mitchell, man, Junior need me. He just, he know I got it. That's my dog. That's the way we roll. That's my dog. Tara Shakespeare. That's my girl. Anytime she need, I don't care what she doing. She is the queen of Arizona comedy. She's the queen of comedy, period. That's one of the best, funniest, flottest, uh, beautiful women out here that does time in these. You know, I love when times you need me. If, I, if I'm here and I'm available, yeah, I got you. I booked Tara a few times. Right. She loved me. Do you see or feel any of the quote-unquote hate in the comedy game, especially in Arizona? And if so, has it touched you? Has some of the comedian hate hit you in, in times, directly or indirectly? It's here. Indirectly hit me because I don't appreciate how they do with other comedians, throwing them on the bus, talking about them. I mean, when they come to me, man, I don't want to hear that, man. I ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. You tell them. Because you tell me, and they my friends, I'm going to tell them. So you yeah, can so that I ain't yeah. being no trick. I'm letting them know you a snake. You trying to throw you on the bus to me. That ain't going to get you no closer to me. Talking about somebody that there's a lot of people that they trying to get on some of your plays, man. I can tell you some secrets. So you're like, oh, I might as well have you giving me tea. <laughs> I'm like, how are you going to try to get me not to like somebody because you don't fuck with nobody? That ain't me. I'm the individual. I, if that person, I don't care. Even if you some of my close friends and they take these, they don't mess with them. I, they still my friends. I'm not going to separate friendships to please you. My so relationship since, with this person ain't my relationship, relationship with you. That's right. That's right. It is what it is. I'll try to treat everybody the same. And if you cross me, I'll let you know. You ain't got to ask nobody. Ain't nobody got to tell you. Man, why you doing that bogey stuff like that, man? I, you know what? So if you see your brother, rather than comedy, streets, or life, he doing some crazy shit, you going to pull him to the side and give him a talk, or are you just yeah. going to let him do his thing? I'll probably You really want to do what you're doing right now? If they keep on, that's on them. And that makes me step back even further. 
you know, I said my piece. I told you how I felt about what you're doing. Do you, but it's a better way. You grown now. We we grown. And I understand, so what? So just don't mess with that person. Well, they started talking smack, throwing you on the bar. I'll see them. So the best way for it, don't say nothing. Just smile at him and tell you, say, keep on going. Because I don't let that phase me. Why would I let what somebody else say about me stop me from doing it? Well, so with that, all right, we talked about Bobby Johnson earlier. You know, Bobby Johnson got mixed reviews out in these streets. You know, some people are like, oh, he, he's a gatekeeper. Oh, he be manipulating, using the comics. Oh, you know, yeah. other people be like, no, he gave me my shot. He giving me excellent chances to make money and make my play. See, you talk to Bobby instead of trying to kiss his ass to get some. Let him do that. I'm not going to do that. You talk to him. We talk about the business aspect of what could, you know, accumulate from this. Oh, hey, Bobby don't want to pay this. Bobby, like, what? don't tell me, tell Bobby. I want to hear that shit. Bobby, my boy. Yeah. And they put, gave me right to nobody else did. He got to make his money. I got his back. Every time he got some, I will promote it, whether I'm on it or not. I'm going to help promote. If I can sell tickets for him to get people there, I'll do that. Because that's what you do, and they see what you do, and they all come back to you. And he's the same cat that, oh, they are talking about one of our promoters that's, you know, they big name or big faces on the post more than them. I'm like, all right, so what you doing? Are you making a table for us to eat at? Are you doing something on your own? Are you bringing some influence? Or are you just out here crying and complaining? See, Bobby Schwartz, he pick and choose the comedians to be on a show that will fit together and fit the type of audience. A lot of comedians don't understand that. You coming in with one set, oh, I didn't want to hear all that. Hey, hey, what about the crowd? If I just want to hear all that, then you're going to lose the crowd. They're going to make the show look bad. Bobby tried to put uh, comedians together that work together well, that fit each other. Oh. So you got to, and I understand that. I said, well, Bobby, why you ain't got me on that show? I used to think like that. I'm like, oh, I understand why. It's almost like putting any cast together, especially like for a play or some type of uh, art show. They got to fit. The actors got to have some type of chemistry. The comedians got to have some type of chemistry or vibe together. They so do. the show is good and not they just do. individuals. Or like, Bobby, I said, you all right with me. I don't care about yeah, I hear a lot of people. Uh, me and Bob uh, talking about a lot of people talk. I say, Bob, I don't worry about that. But they come out and then you tell them. Because then after that, that makes me back up because I know you probably talking to other people about me. And then my face, you're like, oh, I don't do that. You said, you talking so, about so and so. What you saying about me behind my back? Right. That's my boy. I'm going to tell you this snake said good touch. Don't go to him, but now that you know, use that as your tool. I'm not going to go to him. I'm going to tell him. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna act like I'm gonna let you know it don't bother me. I'm gonna keep doing me. How do you deal with uh, the pain or the the realization of change when you realize folks ain't real? Like especially somebody you thought was on in your corner, on your side, or you know, on your team. And you realize, oh, he a snake or he ain't shit. That 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 kind of hurt. Oh, I used to let it hurt. I probably would like somebody to get close to me. They betrayed me. Yeah, trust. That's the thing about betrayal, it comes from the back. <laughs> it ain't, you know, it ain't, the, it ain't the enemy you fighting that you prepared for. It's the dude you didn't see on the bus. It ain't just got to be in college. It could be in real life. Circle of friends. Y'all been kicking it. And you know, come back. You know what? I, I didn't leave alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, you don't mess with me no more. Let me go. You right. Holly, <laughs> you right. I'll tell you right. Man, what I do is you don't really tell you. You know what you did. So, I don't got to tell him. Oh, man, I was just messing around. Man, you, you a comedian. You supposed to be able to take that. I don't know. Some, some lines you don't cross. Me is talking a lot of shit, but we some of the most emotional, softest motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because, again, tears of a clown. I'm crying, bitch. I just know how to make this shit funny, but it don't mean it didn't hurt. But I got to rearrange it so it don't hurt as much. And now it's hilarious. And y'all get to enjoy my pain. That's what it's One of my biggest problems was I, I learned how to block out pain and emotions so damn good that Somebody trying to show me real love and affection. Nah, I ain't fall for it. See, I fucked a lot of related because I want to get, get closer. I get scared. So why why are you trying to get close? What, what's your angle? What you trying to do? Which I shouldn't think like that, but I do. You? But sometimes I go with my gut. It was right. You knew I was committing you know, of it, but you want to get with me, but then... Why you gotta go and roll? All right. You going to a town with your ex girl? But I ain't got to holler. My boy tell you many. Man. That's yeah. like as a man, 
I date a woman with kids, and then I get mad when she got to take care of the kids. Like, you know what you was getting into? She got mad kids. I love kids. I get along with I'm like, but when you try to change me to be what you want me to be instead of let me be what I want to be, you hear a lot of that prep where, you know, sometimes you got to compromise. Compromise is shit. I'm 65 years old, I keep $40. <laughs> so I ain't got to compromise. Shit. <laughs> Tell them, tell them. All right, now let's move more on into some of your uh, achievements that you got going on right now. We definitely want to promote some of the things. Oh, yeah, man. We got a movie coming up called Eye for an Eye. Eye for an Eye. Is this an action? Action a movie. It's a gangster movie. It's a gangster. Okay, I couldn't, I couldn't tell if you was a cop or a motherfucking soldier or a motherfucking hood nigga on the. On the a a, a light skinned light skin Rambo. <laughs> Or Terminator. <laughs> no, I play. Yeah, without spoiling it, what, what's the, the premise of the movie? It's about diary heights. Ooh. All right. And drugs and all that. I play the character called Fresh. I'm a streetwise hustler, dope dealer, fence. <laughs> so what what's the plot? Like what 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 my man's going through in this movie? We got one He's trying to fuck him up. We got one of our friends that's these operation, everything got canceled and everything. Mm. And we need to get that money to get that operation, get the pretty mm. Okay. Yeah, got my girls, my girls don't play. They get the diamonds, they the bees that I was just still. I'm the bread, I'm just sitting back there. Let me get the kid take that money. We need all that. This nigga got a uh, pimp named Slickback slash Shaft Energy on this movie. <laughs> 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 Little Huggy Bear in there, huh? <laughs> I know all the streets. I know about everything. They know about it. It's fun, though. I like the cast and the crew, the director. I like the uh, photography, the film. It's going to be good. It's going to be it's gonna be a part one. With acting, what do you enjoy more, uh, TV, movies, or the stage? The stage I love the stage. I love the stage. I love the live place. Got to be neat. I just did a stage play we did called Church People. P E E P I played the Reverend Do Right. <laughs> oh, we ain't going every day, man. We ain't finishing our. We doing the play live, and I was giving the sermon. I whipped my head back. The wig went off. I ain't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Audience crowd don't know what the hell. Was. But we let it come rolling. That that's why you got to put these comedians and these players because we improv all we improv uh, all the time. All, all the time. Yeah. That's just general. That's well, that is one of my biggest eyes. I can improv. What I'm gonna tell you something about. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna say when I can understand. I read all the shit just come to me. Well, you wrote that down with I don't write nothing down, man, because you write me, so I ain't write you nothing. Because you'll sound know. like me. <laughs> and I got my own unique way of delivering stuff. And I got my own unique way of saying things. At this point in time, how many plays do you have? And do you know all the titles? Can you list them off for us? Let me see. I remember I did one with. My girl from Chicago, fabulous playwright, Sonia, Sonia Camille. Sonia Camille, shout out. That's Vincent. my girl. Sonia she Camille. had me. Love you. In my Love first you. Dink Love stage you. play. Gotcha. It was <laughs> called Secret Lives Green Tea. We sold it out mm -hmm. twice. I played Richard, the owner of the teacher. Man, I loved doing it. Chris Mosley was in there. Yeah. Kiaki Fadzik was friends of mine. Man, I had a ball doing it. But. I gave her ass a hard time and she turned. See, I was hard to work with. I was new at that. Oh, you a prima donna. That's what it is. That's what it was. <laughs> I wonder why she ain't used me no more, but we talked about it. He came in there like, I'm king and shit. <laughs> and I had to slow my roll and wriggle that, man. I'm just casting. Once I learned to slow it down and I see the main concept and I can, I can distinguish the who in charge, what I'm supposed to do, what I'm supposed to do. Slow down, I'm easier to work with. Man. Only way to get to know how to do it is to do it. You know, you can read books, look at YouTube videos all you want, ask questions, but if you don't go through it, you don't know how you host the activate. That was my first stage play, and I, I gave a hell, but we sold out both. Shout out, sorry, you don't again. That's my girl, you know, we talked about it, we cool, still good friends. I'm sorry, he ain't shit. He ain't never been shit, ain't never gonna be shit. It just ain't shit. Yeah, I just ain't shit. <laughs> a lot of people know what I say was on my mind. I say what I mean, I mean what I say. So that's it. Man, I'm like. What about the other plays? You remember any oh, other yeah, plays? Yeah, I remember, yeah. Church people, murder of a boss. 
Oh, uh, Price of Freedom. Add them up. Uh, Harris County Reunion. Stop it. Harris Butte. What about the movies? Is this your first movie, Eye for Eye? No, I, just, I did Shaded Passion. That's a movie. It's on Tubi and Amazon. Shaded Passion. Shaded on Passion, YouTube. Tubi. And on Eat YouTube, it. we got the one about Phoenix. It's called the Bell, D-A-L-E web series. Uh -huh. I played the crime boss of Maryville. Veil uh -huh. is short for Maryville. Okay. And we did that, but- I uh, AZ, we got your, a whole movie out here with, with one of your best and brightest uh, uh, so uh, entertainment stars. You know, I mean, watch. So I yeah, want to go to uh, YouTube. It's called the Veil Web Series. I come in at episode four. Shout but watch all time. six, it was good. Uh, hopefully, this year we will restart that. We had some complications, people died. And... Mm. But I had fun, I love going back. Mm. On down the state that we live well, in. Well, 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 yeah. I'm gonna tell all the comedians something I learned. Mm. Take it for what it is. You gotta be real and you gotta stay home. Stay home is hard. It be truly your craft. If you gotta throw people on the bus, talk about people thinking it's gonna make you Get ahead. It's every day in the dark close to me. I'm talking about all y'all needs. Don't listen to that. I'm gonna be talking about y'all. Whatever well, you <laughs> <really> <laughs> not not too like. So I know people talk about it. I can hear, but you know what? We all got somebody whispering our name. When I oh, just keep it moving, I don't worry about it. They keep I keep them wondering. I remember talking about it was all in my face. I'm, I'm like, good. But that's his shit. Wow. Let him lay in there. Concentrate on what people think and say about me. I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And how you get the nerves? Just get on stage. Do you need drinking? Do you get out? No, when I hit the stage, I'm so. I've seen drunk comedians blow it. Even famous ones blow because they was drinking and getting high before they got on stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trying to knock back the nerves, you didn't knock back the talent. <laughs> Especially if I'm producing the company, so I, mean, I got to watch all my money. I got to watch everything. Nobody else looking at it. Everybody else goes. Except the way I was trying to tell you. A lot of me, I don't understand it though. Like when I heard, I saw a character with you, and I thought about it. I said, a lot of this shit, I see it all the time. Tell it. You sitting out, they might not know all this. He all come in, talk, this shit, shit, he ain't even funny. I be hearing that. That's your opinion. I guess you do it. I don't want to be in the army. ain't even in the conversation. I will not engage in that kind of conversation. Honey, anything with entertainment has its, its, its fans. You know what I'm saying? This music might not be good for you, but these people over here love it. This comedy style ain't good for you, but these but these folks over here can't get enough of it. So you gotta do your own thing. If he making people laugh, she making somebody laugh, and they bringing in money, don't worry about that. Figure out you gonna bring in some money. They were like, how you let them get on that to host this show and on that show with the temptation? Man, I'm old school. I can relate to the crowd better. I killed it. They even had me singing and dancing with them on stage. It's temptation. You know, I got a chance maybe later this year to join them on one of their tours and they can hear on Seattle or Cali. Right. So that's still open. You know, I booked a lot for the year, the Laugh Factory in LA coming, the Laugh Factory in Chicago coming. Okay. Hoping Second City is I'm just lying or you driving now? Lying. When I go to Chicago, next time I'll be driving because I'll be here a while. Okay. I've been there for like three, four weeks. I can't pay for it. I ain't going to be borrowing my sister car on it because she going to fuss. She, my yard, she thinks she the boss. Whenever you need it, that's what she gotta have. It's my car. <laughs> no, but I have for you know. I'm just man. I'm just doing me now. I'm 65. My son grown, doing good. That was my main focus. Make sure I got him right. Now he got. I ain't gotta worry about that. I could do me. So looking back at all you've been through, where you came from. How you snuck into Arizona and bang? Hey, are you coming in? <laughs> he snuck in the back door. All those stage coats. Look at that. <laughs> and how comedy and being an entertainer and acting. It saved my life. I, that's all I'm about to get to. What's the big difference? How do you how you look back at it finally? How did it help you? It saved my life. It gave me something to focus on. It was something that I wanted. And I knew it's not easy. And I wanted to go get it, but I love challenge. 
And now I'm pretty well, you know, I ain't gonna say I'm established, established, I'm well that I could pick and choose now. Mm. Freedom. Freedom. I hate press, stress kills. And I'm like, I used to think about it all the time. Didn't want to make mistakes, mm -hmm. trying to be perfect, ain't nobody there. You want to do things as perfectly as you can, but you're never going to hit perfection. No. But you don't want to stop reaching for it either. And when you got your, you keep your close friends close, you keep. The yeah. ends. <laughs> you know, I get a lot, you get, man, you, you want to manage looking old, oh, man, why do you, why do you ain't got no girlfriend, why you ain't say, I'm not ready right now because this is just me. Mm -hmm. A relationship takes time. It takes commitment. And it wouldn't be fair to me or you to try to date you and do this, and I ain't got the time that it takes to put into that. Mm -hmm. I ain't got the time to give you that it takes. So yeah, I stay single. A lot of women, they got the women. Team. Let me take this. Y'all listen. Women. women. Females. Females. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real with y'all. There's a difference between dating and going on a date. Right. Bring it down. Now, if I take you on a date, we just went for a date. That's it. You know, I, uh, now if I was dating you, yeah, that means we're seeing each other. So, date, dating. Date, one time, because I might not want to take your ass out no more. It's that simple. Well, I'm get it confused. I thought we was dating. We went out. If we go out on a date, it ain't my fault you gave me something. That don't mean that I was weak. Let's go, you something. <laughs> we outside the box with it. <laughs> I'm older now. I'm picking and choose what I do. The one guy, come on, baby, we go to my house. We can just do everything. Huh? She said, well, come on, let's do 69. No, baby, I'll do 68. You over yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'll do you want, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I just like to have fun. I tell I'm fun, but try to make me what I ain't. They try to put clamps on me, put your hooks on me. I don't want them. My friends, my boy said, I'll walk away in a minute. All right, well, that's the thing. Do you believe it's a woman out there that can make you want that and make you want to be less selfish about what you need and what you want out of your career and be there for her? Possibly. Yeah. Believe me, if I was with you, I'm going to support you 100%. I'm going to be here and you don't to worry about that. Yeah. And if, if you with me, you got to worry about I'm going to be with you because that's me. So you ain't going to lie and worry about what you was gone. Who is this calling your father's ass in here? I don't know. Don't your ex live in Vegas? That's what it is. What you said, ex? But you going to Vegas to do a show? Well, why don't you come with me? It's a big city, baby. Come on with me. Well, you know, I got to work in that. I told you about this show, Boss. If you could have been there. So you ain't got no kids to watch. We go on for the weekend. You all for the weekend. Well, you know, I got to be for work Monday morning. We'll come back Sunday. And when you make excuses like that, yeah. oh, you're all. I think that's the thing with relationships. Folks lose they self in it, and then they figure out who they originally was. Cause I'm not that man no more. I'm so and so's husband. I'm so and so's boyfriend. Right. How do you keep yourself in a relationship if you do get in a relationship? See, a lot of women, yeah, women again. Y'all do this dumb shit. <laughs> Tell you some dumb shit, y'all. Y'all be. We are not women bashing. Don't come for I'm me. Don't women bashing. Don't come for me. Don't be in my car. Women take it from OG. I'm don't gonna take me. I'm gonna take we you from experience coming for y'all and what I see. We love y'all and what I've, I got a lot of women friends. I see a lot of y'all. and I told y'all right. Y'all yeah. do this. <laughs> y'all sabotage the shit before you can give a brother a chance. Mm. You thinking he the same as the last one you did? He gotta be. What you need to do? Man. What you need to do? You <laughs> got to get out that other swamp and go somewhere else to pick your fish. Mm -hmm. Quit dating in the same swamp. Kept pulling out frogs. You think frogs in all the water? Oh, and you said you got a good man, but you die. I don't need you doing that shit in my head. I know what you're, if you know it, what the fuck is you dating me for? Yeah, right. If you know I'm gonna do this already, you feel it, what the fuck is you dating me for? And you see, then I hear it a lot. No girl, I was really interested in you, but she wanted to just have a ball this and that. I'll see her like six months later. Hey, stranger, you don't even call me. <laughs> <laughs> I think mean, what happened, that little punk ass relationship you was in didn't work. Right. I'll tell them that real. No, girl, it ain't that, no. Well, we need to get together. No, we don't. 
I'm gonna be straight with you. You want me to lie? Lead you on the arm. You gotta yeah. find out what a woman actually wants. Are, are you hurt? Are you trying to heal? You want some medicine? Or are you trying to party? You need something turned up so you want some liquor. What type of drink do you want? Because if they treat you like medicine, they're gonna take you until they feel better and then you're gonna get the F on. But then if you want the toxic, now you're crying about why my liver hurt. Was that a whole bottle of liquor and you drink it from, from bottles up? Like, what do you want? What do you actually want? And I would not have dated a woman that when you in a bit, don't touch my hair. Don't touch my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you take that motherfucker over and leave it on the dresser. Hair and be a killer. Let's, <laughs> go, let's, let's, let's go do what we gotta do. I could do that. I'll take my hat off, you take yours. <laughs> Then you want to be old, and then you want to... Wait, don't matter y'all smoking weed. That's what y'all do. But don't get mad when I don't want to cuddle with your ass. You weed all up on it, that shit smelling like weed, fried chicken. I would have that smoke. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want all that on it all. I really just take it off. Your weed smell like yesterday. Like, yeah. I can smell everything you did yesterday. Yeah. Wait a minute, I love y'all, but I keep it real with y'all. Some of y'all, yeah, I got $40. Some of y'all, we would <laughs> I let one get away. Mm. Met around the first time I came out, she was on a black point with She went back to Slide her big blazers. Hitting ties. Got you. She's the only woman. Now, she gave me some head. I like head. <laughs> this motherfucker sucked my dick so good, I started farting. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of woman I need. Reduce all the tensions. Oh, I'm like, uh, 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 she was like, you really get excited. Uh, uh, <laughs> Baby, you relax. <laughs> nah, this been a fucking great time. We ain't had too many fucking. I didn't expect to laugh at this motherfucker. All right, now that's on me. I assume. You know what they say when you assume. <laughs> I just keep it real. They'll tell you I keep it real. Give, give the people a five minute monologue, a soliloquy, stand up, five to 10 minutes. Let them know about you. Let them know what you got coming up. Let them know what they need to know about their goddamn self. And uh, take us on out. This is the comedy corner. We outside the box wheel. Okay, comedy corner, but I got to pee. Can we pause for our pee? <laughs> Hold on. We go. We need to get off for the piss. No, you got five minutes. And then we go. That's going to make it even better. Okay, no. With that piss you. energy. Hit him with the piss. I ain't going to hit you with the piss. <laughs> I'm not trying to stop. One more. My fellas out there. Those older guys, you know, in your middle 50s, late 50s, 60s. Look, here, y'all know we like them young girls. God, you know we like them young bitches. I do. But let me tell you something about them motherfuckers. Bro, if you take them motherfuckers home with you or to the hotel, bro, you got to sleep with your legs across them because them bitches steal. Them bitches Bad steal. Bad. And see, ladies, at that moment, I found out something about y'all titties that you don't even know. Oh, yeah, Look like I'm laying there with my leg across a girl, the little stealing bitch, and I'm looking at her titties, looking at me. And I know something about y'all titties, ladies. Yeah, I did. Right there on them Oreos or what the fuck you call them things. Here we are. Yeah, them things. You know, <laughs> where the nipple live at. A lot of y'all bitches got bumps. And it's on, they got, a lot of them got them, you ever seen, you know, I, nigga, I don't see a lot of them. 65, a lot of them got them little bumps around there. I used to always wonder what them motherfuckers was for. I figured out one night. Yeah, I did. You know what they for? They for blind, bitch. Ah, bread. <laughs> Look, I'm your boy, Easy Living, man. That's all I got for y'all. Y'all tune in to City Buzz, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be epic. I enjoyed being the first one. Shout out no, Bobby Johnson, no, no. Sonya Camille, Lamar Mitchell, Todd Shakespeare. I love y'all. Everybody that got their name lit up in here, hit us up. I need all y'all. Todd Shakespeare, I'm ready to talk to you. Chris Moss, but you know you, my bro. Uh, uh, sincere, holla at me. I got to come on your show, so yeah, that's fair. Right. I've been on the show a few times. And y'all can follow me on Facebook, Comedian Seth Easy Living. And I'm on um, um, Insta Majig. What they call it? <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, that Instagram thing. Comedian Easy Living. Talking sex. about the movie, too. Come uh, watch this movie. Oh, yeah, come watch the movie. I'll let you know when we be posted. And I'll let City Buzz know when it's going to be released. Hopefully by the end of this year. Uh, for an hour, Boss Pearl. Uh, well, y'all. Y'all heard it from your, from your host, from your man's and them. Man, it's the Comedy Corner. We outside the box with it. It's your host, Mean Gene, 313. You know you heard. Feel the box. Go Lions!
city, but yeah, it's gonna go live. I got the bands on. Boy, I'm gonna go live, big West. Big West, nigga. Hello, we out. <laughs> City Buzz Saturdays. We'll be bringing you the best events, music, and more each and every week right here on Team City Buzz.